Welcome back to This is Van Color. My name is Mo Amir. Our featured guest tonight is a commentator on BC politics and a strategic communications and policy advisor to a range of clients. She is the vice president of the BC Liberal Party, although it might not be called that for much longer, and that's exactly what we're going to discuss. She is Caroline Elliott. Caroline, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Mo. So let's talk about the BC Liberal Party as it's named at this moment. Yes. Let's do a brand assessment. Sure. When you look at the party, where is it right now in terms of public perception, and where do you want it to be in terms of public perception? Sure. I mean, if you want to look at it in terms of a brand assessment, I think it's important actually to go all the way back to 2017, Okay. Uh, five years ago. Uh, as you know, the BC Liberals actually won the election, won the most seats, but ended up not, they formed government briefly, of course, mm -hmm. but they ended up not staying in government for long due to an agreement between the, the NDP and the Greens. Uh, it wasn't exactly an impetus for renewal. It wasn't exactly an impetus to do something different if the party had governed well for the past 16 years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't thinking like, look, this is a kick in the butt we need to, to do something really different. Then 2020 happened. Yeah. And 2020. Different story. A different story, <laughs> right? And so I think that that's, that became that impetus, right? Uh, they were defeated quite uh, um, uh, decisively, mm -hmm. I guess you might say. It was a pandemic election, so there were a few things. It was, it was a snap election, the NDP called. I have to throw in that they broke the, the fixed election date law in order to do so. Um, but uh, what that amounted to was a, it was a significant loss of seats right. and, and a, a moment to kind of look and reflect and say, we need to be turning our heads away from our, our past record and into the future and what we want to be as a party going forward. So when answering the question of a brand assessment, I think now that's the context we're in. Uh, there's been a significant process of renewal all, already underway. Uh, part of that, of course, is the name change, uh, which you mentioned in, in your intro there. Uh, that's that's one small aspect. Okay. I'm under no illusions. No one at the party is under any illusions that, that <laughs> changing the name. It'll fix everything? Yeah, you just stick a new name on the website or, or the, the header of your paper or whatever and, and think you're doing something different. It's not enough, but it's it's something, right? It's something that was committed to. The, our leader, Kevin Falcon, is delivering on in terms of the commitment he made to members to consider it. Uh, so so that's going ahead. But it's, it's way more than that. It's it's a new leader, Kevin Falcon, who I just mentioned. It's... it's uh, attracting incredible new candidates. Eleanor Sturko was one example of that in Surrey South. She won quite decisively, as, as you know, just Which recently. was a BC Liberal seat, to be fair, it held by another woman previously. Good point, except that last time our candidate won it by approximately four points, I think. Mm -hmm. This time, uh, Eleanor Sturko won it by over 20 points. So enough, a yeah. big turnaround in terms of electoral fortunes, I think, particularly in the suburbs like Surrey that people say are increasingly a problem for the BC Liberals. Uh, so, so there's the lead Leader, there's the candidates, there's also policy. So it comes down to actually like developing innovative policy that, that's actually talking to the issues, um, you know, that, that British Columbians are Are you suggesting about. that the party was pretty stagnant between 2017 and 2020 then? That seems to be what you're implying. I, I guess I am implying that a bit. I, I, what I'm really saying is, is, you know, there wasn't really a sense that any, much had to be done quite differently. Mm. And after 2020, there's definitely a big sense around the party that things need to be done differently. And I think they're putting their money where their mouth so, is. So that's what, what I'm getting at. What has the party been doing wrong? Obviously, me as a commentator, yeah. I can give my opinion, but I want to hear it from you. What has the party been doing wrong for the last few years before the new leader and this renewal process that yeah. you're undertaking? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think part of it is, is, is talking to uh, British Columbians about the things they're talking about in the words that they're talking about them with. We were talking before the show about Kevin Falcon's new videos, for example, that he has mm -hmm. out on, on social media, making you better use of social media, smart sure. use of social media, but also he's talking about things that British Columbians care about, the lack of, uh, of NDP action on affordability. You know, I'm sure you'll see more around the, the lack of, uh, of action on public safety, on healthcare. There's a whole range of issues mm -hmm. that people are talking about all over the place. I mean, I was out door knocking with Eleanor Sturko in that Surrey South by-election. So frequently, people would say, I'm worried about a family doctor. I don't have one. No one I know has one. How do we get one? They're worried about uh, whether or not they're going to get the care they need in, in the ER. They're worried about uh, whether or not they're going to be able to make ends meet. Right. Just basic cost of living stuff. So, And then public safety on top of that. So there's a lot of concerns. And, and one of the things the BC Liberals are doing is getting out there, talking to people about those concerns, and talking uh, about the NDP's record on those concerns. And, all, of course, forthcoming will have to be a lot of um, um, policy solutions as well. So the new name, BC United, yes. I feel like a lot of people are going to say, okay, you know, it's a pretty good name. I think it's a, a pretty good name. But they're going to look at the caucus and they're going to say it's still a pretty white, pretty male caucus. 
that a lot of British Columbians simply do not see themselves in. And you said that there is work, other mm -hmm. work being done mm -hmm. in terms of this renewal process, but there's probably a lot of British Columbians going, well, you know, it's just a fresh coat of paint. Like, how, what, what is actually being done to renew this party aside from a new leader who was previously a mm -hmm. uh, BC Liberal cabinet minister and mm -hmm. MLA? Uh, what's new? What, what's being done that's, that's so refreshing, I well, guess. Well, and, and that, and in your question about the, the sort of the existing caucus is a really good one. So we have 27 MLAs right now. There's 87 seats in this province. That's one of the things about losing big is you actually have a lot of seats to fill, a lot of seats that are actually going to be winnable seats. Mm -hmm. So this is exciting. We actually get to to uh, fill those candidacies with, with people who look like British Columbians, who look like the diversity of British Columbians all across the province, who actually are speaking to those issues, who are passionate about the issues. Eleanor Circle is one of those people, our very first candidate out of the gate uh, that we've had since 2020. And I think she's fantastic. I think most British Columbians would agree. So we need to do more of that, and we're going to be. One of the things that I've noticed is that the BC NDP and the BC Liberals seem to be in agreement on a lot of different policy. But what I hear from your leader, Kevin Falcon, is that, you know, the BC NDP are fine, but they just don't know how to get the job done. We know how to get the job done. I look at things like the carbon tax. I look at things even like the housing plan. And what the BC Liberals and Kevin Falcon seem to be attacking the BC NDP on is this idea of competency. Is that really where you're trying to carve out your value proposition as a party that, listen, we actually do have a lot in common, but we have experienced people or people who know how to get it done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of that is true. I mean, it's, it's if you define competency broadly in terms of the ability to, to deliver on the promises you make mm -hmm. of doing what you say you're going to do, um, yeah, Kevin Falcon brings that, and that is going to be a big part of what the BC Liberals talk about. I wouldn't say it's post-partisan entirely. I mean, I do think we come from um, a, a different uh, probably way of thinking about the issues. Uh, you know, But is it post-ideological? Well, I, I, I think what we're going with with the BC United name, just to, to go back to that, is, is, you know, we are a coalition of federal liberals. We are a coalition of federal conservatives and also non-federal affiliations at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have people who come from sort of ideological uh, standpoints. And I think largely, though, what British Columbians expect is, as, as, the va as you know, the vast majority of people do not belong to any political party whatsoever, sure, yeah. is they're kind of thinking... Get beyond that stuff. Get beyond where you're coming from and focus more on results. How are you making my life better? And I think that that's where the BC Liberals, and in terms of that competence, in terms of that ability to get things done and delivering on promises, that's where I think they're going to be able to stand out significantly from the NDP. What can we expect in terms of logo? Is it going to be two hands shaking? <laughs> Two hands up in the air. What 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 are we seeing for a United logo? Is it going to look like a soccer club logo? I'm just glad you didn't ask me what colors because <laughs> there's that too. Um, well, well, we're going to undertake that work. I don't think we want to go down that route uh, too soon because we want to let our members have a say. As you know, uh, the, the name has not actually been changed. We've landed on a name that is going to be voted on members before the end of the year. Got it. Hopefully, we'll have that information around the voting process coming out soon. But um, once our members have had their say, if they choose this name, then we'll go down that route and we'll have really exciting colors and logos and maybe even <laughs> jerseys and soccer scarves. I don't know. Oh, that I like that. That's yeah. a good tie-in. I think you guys should lean into the whole soccer. It sounds like a soccer club name. That's that's great. I, and I think we should. I mean, politics is a team sport after all. And I know... Uh, You're already doing it. See? Right? See? You know? <laughs> and, and people like politics. Or they like uh, they like uh, sports a lot more than they like politics. That is very say. true. So I'm, I'm fine with leaning into it. Caroline, this was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mo. Folks, that was the vice president of the BC Liberal Party, Caroline Elliott. We will be recording some overtime to discuss more BC politics. So find This Is Van Color wherever you listen to your podcasts for more with Caroline. Now, after some business, we have a live musical performance right here in this studio. We've never done this before. It is a Van Color first, but I promise you, you will not want to miss it. That is up next. I'm Mo Amir. This is Van Color.